Since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, teenage mental health has recorded a massive decrease during lockdown. With seeing your friends becoming illegal, going to school banned and forced inside with no end in sight, our collective mental health plummeted. However, even before the pandemic, it has always seemed that teenagers have felt the full force of mental health lows and isolation felt like the catalyst in recent years. With a search for answers on why this is, I wanted to speak to mental health experts and also a close friend of mine who has experienced the lows brought on by the 2020 pandemic. Lorraine Forrest, a mental health expert working with young people at North King College, agreed to share some of her personal knowledge on this topic. So, my name is Lorraine Forrest and I am the Counselling and Mental Health Coordinator at North Kent College, working in student support. So I find that the main, the common themes that students will come to see me about for counselling are um, stress, anxiety, low mood, depression, low self-esteem or confidence. So the reason that a lot of young people struggle and ask for counselling is because it's a time of life. When you're a teenager, you're going through so many different things. So, you know, your hormones, you're going into puberty. Um, as you're getting older, you're getting ready to be an adult. Um, college becomes more difficult. School gets more difficult. Then college might be more difficult. Um, friendships, you know, so socialising, being respected by your peers, fitting in. I think a teenager affects my mental health particularly because when I was around the ages of 10 to 11, I was happy, free, thinking about no one but me, you know, and I, you don't have things to think about, you, you're stress free, and you don't have to think about your future that quickly, but when it comes to secondary school, it's so, it's so overwhelming, and because you're going through puberty, your hormones are all over the place, and it's just like, you can't, you can't, some people can't control depression if it comes to them. Um, at a certain time or area in their life but especially being a teenager depression on top of your hormones being out of place would just be way worse you know what i've found is that in the last couple of years the pandemic has had a huge part to play in how young people how teenagers and young adults feel about their lives so a lot of students um, reported feeling better during lockdown because they didn't feel as anxious. They actually quite liked being at home. I think that lockdown has benefited my mental health by giving me the space and time to reflect on things that maybe I was avoiding during when I was really busy. And I think although the distance was kind of maybe difficult for some, it can sometimes be good to like go inwards. Um, I like staying at home. So the lockdown was great for me because you just stayed at home all the time and no school either, so that was pretty cool. But a lot of students really struggled the opposite way, being stuck at home. Maybe if things are difficult at home, they were there all the time, you know, dealing with things, dealing with problems non-stop. Um, I would say that my mental health was at its lowest when we was all in lockdown. Um, you couldn't see your friends, you couldn't go nowhere, and even just keeping up with them on social media was draining because you, the human contact was at a bare minimum. Um, well, from lockdown I got very lonely um, because I'm actually quite a loner, like I prefer to be alone, I, I enjoy my own company. <laughs> But in lockdown, it's like you have no choice. Like you can't hang out with people if that's what you want. Like you have to be alone. Um, so that got a bit hard because for months I was just like alone, which sucked very much. But you know, you make it work. Um, I noticed a lot of the people around me struggling as well as I did um, because lockdown, you couldn't seek help. And at our age, it was impossible really unless your parents did it and paid for it and therapy, therapy can cost a lot of money so you could really see the toll was taken on all your friends and family but yeah I, I knew of quite a few people that struggled with their mental health during that time severely. I managed to get an interview with Alan Hayes the founder of a Maidstone based therapy and support group. So my name is Alan Hayes, I'm a founder of Therapy Partners and also the founder of Rewrite Your Story, a mental health charity that supports children and young people across Kent and, and the South East and the South West. 
And we're here today to just to talk about the impact of the pandemic on mental health and just generally around mental health, the themes around mental health and support and how we can reduce the stigma for people as well. So I'm a um, systemic family practitioner. So I work with families and couples and um, Therapy Partners is a private therapy organisation and we have around 30 therapists that work across whole sectors. So working with children and young people, with families, with couples. Oh. So Mason Community Support Centre is a long established sort of community centre. We've been around since the 1980s and it, it consists of lots of organisations that offer support. Um, as we write your story as therapy partners, we work with children and young people. Um, we also deliver individual therapy in the centre itself, which is in evenings and after school for people. And we've been doing that for about the past five years. So here we have, this is one of our, our smaller therapy rooms. So we have four of these therapy rooms that people can come on and come into and access and, and get the support. We also offer online, we've been doing online since pandemic, since lockdown, so it's more accessible. Uh, so we do Zoom or we do WhatsApp or we use different media to engage with that as well. And that means we can, the people that are further afield, so if they can't come into the centre, we can work online. One of the key things about working online is confidentiality. So we say to young people, if you actually having some support, try and sit in this place so you're not being going to be overheard, so it's secure and confidential and you just feel safer to be able to talk in, in that space really. I think the pandemic has been really difficult, um, especially for, 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 for people in school, because obviously school closing down so you don't see your friends, you know, all your social interactions have gone. I know some of the people that we were working with, that they didn't do the prom evenings, you know, they've gone to university and not done Freshers Week, it's all been online. So you're really isolating, your world gets really smaller as well. Um, I think isolation, I think just being at home, you know, just your day-to-day -day routine, being disrupted, it's been really difficult. I think now that, you know, things are starting to open up again, hopefully things will get better and people can engage in normal social activities. So hopefully we'll see some, some positivity, I guess, in the future. The conversation about mental health, we need to continue, you know, the stigma's there, but just be open, just be honest. If you're struggling, reach out for help. There's lots of help and support available. But it's not all bad. Charities like Rewrite Your Story have worked hard to make sure that teenagers have a place to be heard and have their mental health looked after. The advice that I'd give to somebody who's struggling with their mental health would be absolutely to talk to somebody. Tell them that you're struggling. Tell them that you know, you're having a difficult time for whatever reason. Whatever the reason is, you might be feeling really down, you might be feeling really stressed. Anything like depression, a bereavement, something could have happened that made you feel really sad. And that's the sort of thing that you might need to talk to somebody about. And then that will help you to get it out in the open. The stuff that I do to um, help out my mental health is to... I take hot baths. Um, that's really good for me. Uh, I drink lots of wine. Uh, and I like to play video games and listen to music and dance. I kind of like just feed myself with things that I'm genuinely interested in and that make me feel good. So I, I like to read um, and kind of connect to the things that I liked when I was younger. Um, from the worst points in my life, which probably was lockdown, um, my mental health did improve by well lockdown their rules um becoming less uh restrictive um since you could go see your friends and spend time with them it was like a breath of fresh air a new environment so you could just go and be free and that's how my mental health just started improving it was just being around a new scenery i think not to suffer in silence i think to reach out the biggest thing is to reach out but ideally there's lots of support around you know maybe that you talk to one of your friends you know normally people who've got good support networks and social networks just talk to somebody you know you're not on your own and there are services available for people to get support if you or anyone you know are struggling with their mental health please don't be afraid to speak up Organisations like Rewrite Your Story and people like Lorraine are here for you to speak to and help is always out there.